What's going on fellow music makers? My name is Patrick. I'm a New York City based singer, songwriter, guitar player. And I get so many questions from so many of you asking, where do I start when I'm trying to build a home music studio? Maybe you've been writing some songs or making some beats and you wanna assemble some tracks or some demos and send them out and share them with the world. Now, what do I mean by home music studio? I'm talking about a small one room space where with a few pieces of equipment, you could start transforming your creative ideas into listenable audio tracks. A lot of times these are referred to as writer studios and there's a little bit of an assumption that you won't get the same quality that you would in a big full studio. But with the ever growing increasing power of the digital audio tech world, it is easier than ever to make great sounding tracks right from home. All right, I get it, you get all that, but how do we get started? The key to building your first studio is to always utilize what you have. I'm gonna list some things here and you may already have those things and you may not need to invest in something just because you think it's a better option than what you already have. Only you know what your budget is and it's gonna be up to you to allocate your money appropriately. The other thing to consider is that if you're new to all of this, mixing, recording, and production, you may find that after doing this for a little while that it's really not something that you're interested in. And you like music and you like making music, this just isn't the route for you, and that's okay. The point is you don't wanna invest a ton of money into something until you're absolutely sure that it's something that you wanna do for a long time. All right, let's jump into it. I'm gonna to try to get through this as quickly and efficiently as possible, so here we go. First thing you're gonna need is obviously a computer. Do I think that you need to get a new one? Probably not. The one that you have is probably good enough to get started. I'm not gonna get into the Mac versus PC discussion because both choices offer really great options. But if you're wondering what I use, I use a MacBook Pro. Here are the specs. But if you're just starting out, you probably don't need something this powerful. I started recording on a regular MacBook and it was just fine for what I was doing back then. Today's computers can handle so much more and I'm sure that what you have is perfectly fine to get started with. Next up, you're gonna need a DAW. And this is the software. This is your command center. This is where all your recordings are gonna go. This is where you're gonna mix your track. You're gonna arrange your song. You're gonna record your software instruments. This is where it all happens. Now, obviously there are a lot of pro options out there, but again, you wanna save money where you can. And there are so many great free options as well. Now, if you're running a Mac, this decision is very simple in my opinion. Start with GarageBand. That's where I started. It's free software. It's gonna familiarize you with recording and mixing and using some of the different plugins. And it's going to allow you to transition into a pro software like Logic Pro very seamlessly. That's the route I chose and I have hashtag no regrets. That's my credo. No regrets. You may have heard about other softwares like Pro Tools or Ableton. Pro Tools has an option called Pro Tools First. It's a free software, comes highly recommended from Graham over at the Recording Revolution, who is a great source. Ableton Live Lite is another free download and is a great option, but Ableton is not a DAW that I use myself, so I don't have too much to tell you guys about that. I am going to include a link in the description though from a guy named Alex Wilson, who lays out all of the major DAWs. It's a great Reader's Digest sort of a read that will break down who each digital audio workstation is for. I highly recommend it in the description below. The two DAWs that I have worked with are Pro Tools and Logic Pro. Pro Tools is the unrivaled industry standard. If you know how to run Pro Tools, you'll be able to work at virtually any major recording studio. So if you are an aspiring engineer or producer, Pro Tools might be something that you want to consider. So why would you choose Logic Pro? Now for me, I chose Logic Pro because it made sense. It was the next step up from GarageBand, which I started on because it was free. Logic Pro right out of the box gives you all the tools that you need. I just really like the aesthetics of Logic Pro. The workflow is great. A lot of the stock plugins that come with Logic Pro X are great and I use them. It has great compressors, great reverbs, great EQs. And even some of the studio instruments aren't that bad either. The virtual drummer is a really cool feature. And I remember using this a lot when I was songwriting and I wasn't quite sampling or programming drums yet. It gave my songwriting process kind of a whole new life when I felt like I had an actual drummer that I was working with. Between Logic and Pro Tools, Logic was also the cheaper route. So for me, that was a no brainer. I'm definitely noticing a lot more people working in Logic and it is the DAW that I always recommend. 
But again, there's so many great options. There's so many things I haven't talked about. As always, I can only tell you guys what has worked really well for me. So again, I'll point you to that article from Alex Wilson. No affiliation, I just think it's a great read and it'll help answer a lot of the questions that you have. The next thing you're going to need is an audio interface. This is gonna take the signal from your mic or your instrument and convert it into a digital audio file. I really like Apogee's products. I use an Apogee Duet as my main audio interface, but there's just so many great options out there. The Apollo Twin from Universal Audio is a big favorite, but I think the best option for those of you who are starting out and you wanna maintain a low budget is the Scarlett Solo from Focusrite. It's 99 bucks. It comes with two free software options, Pro Tools First and Ableton Live Lite, and this is just all around a great bundle. The Scarlett Solo has one mic input, one instrument input, which is gonna be perfect for your home studio recording needs. It records at really high sample rates, which I did not know. Shout out Graham at Recording Revolution again. Overall guys, this is a great option. I wish something like this was around when I started recording music at home. I think I had to shell out like 500 bucks to buy my first audio interface. So this is so great. I recommend this to everybody who asks me where to start. I'll be sure to link all of these products down in the description below. As always, y'all know the drill. Next up, you're gonna need a microphone. And to be honest with you, I could do an entire video on microphones alone. It's incredibly preferential. It's kind of like asking somebody what kind of guitar should you buy. Really, you're gonna to wanna to pick something out that is going to best complement the vocalist and best suit your studio needs. Again, coming back to our main point, Chances are, if you've been playing music for a little while, you've got a microphone lying around somewhere. You can always start with that, even if it's just a Shure 58. Now, let's say you're a vocalist, or capturing high quality vocals is really important to what you wanna do in your home studio. It's important to understand the different types of microphones. Most mics will fit into one of two categories, condenser microphones or dynamic microphones. To put it simply, condenser microphones are high quality studio microphones. They're incredibly sensitive and they have a high frequency response. In most cases, condenser microphones will produce a more studio quality recording than a dynamic microphone would. Dynamic mics like the Shure 57 or the Shure 58 that I'm sure you've seen are more rugged and less sensitive, therefore making them better suited for live performances, for example. Now, this is not to say that dynamic mics are only used for live music. In fact, the Shure SM57 is probably one of the most used mics for music recording. But in a lot of cases, especially when recording vocals, you're gonna want a good condenser microphone. Now here's the bad news. Prices of a lot of condenser microphones can get astronomically high. But you don't have to break the bank to get something really awesome and really high quality. Now for the sake of keeping this video as short as possible for you guys, I'm not going to go too in depth on each of these recommendations. So if you want some more info, check the resources that I list in the description below. Just do a little bit of research and you'll come up with a ton of stuff. The first high quality mic I ever bought was the Bluebird from Blue Microphones. At the time I was doing some work in a friend's studio and he lived and died by the baby bottle from Blue. The baby bottle was a little bit out of my price range, but I looked around their website and figured I would take a chance on this Bluebird mic that was under $200. At the time, I don't even think I understood how remarkable this mic is. The sound quality that you get at this low price is just incredible. As your studio evolves and you start adding things like tube preamps, this mic is only gonna become more powerful for you. Another great budget option is the Samson C01. Now I don't have one of these, I've never used one, but it does come highly recommended from a lot of resources that I really trust. And I wanted to make sure that I had a couple of really low budget options for those of you who are looking for that. Do the research, don't just take my word for it. I've just heard a lot of great things about this mic and wanted to be sure that I brought it up for you guys. So let's talk about a couple of pricier options that I use. We're talking about condenser mics, these are still low cost, but maybe a little bit more than some of you are willing to spend. This is the TLM 102 from Neumann. Now, if you know a little bit about condenser mics, you surely know the name Neumann. The U87 is widely regarded as one of the best microphones money can buy, but it's gonna cost a lot of money. When I was recording my first album, we used Neumann mics quite a bit, and I wanted to see if I could find something at a lower price point that would still deliver that Neumann quality sound. A good friend of mine recommended the TLM 102, and I figured it was worth a shot. You can always return stuff, right? I will say this mic definitely delivers that Neumann quality. The TLM 102 is gonna give you a full, 
high quality, crisp sound. The high end is noticeably pronounced, which makes it a great mic for recording acoustic guitar or to use as a drum overhead mic, or even just a general room mic if you wanna capture some ambiance. Obviously it works great on vocals too and is worth checking out. Now this is a mic that I've been using a lot lately. It is the AT4050 from Audio-Technica. This and the TLM102 from Neumann have a lot of similarities. They both sound really rich, really full, really clear with nice crisp high end. But this microphone offers a couple of advanced features which make its application very multi-purpose. First of all, this mic is a multi-pattern microphone, which simply put means that there are a few different settings that determine how this microphone picks up sound. It offers an omnidirectional pattern, a cardioid pattern, and a bi-directional pattern, which basically just adds to the versatility of this microphone. It also offers a low frequency roll off and a 10 decibel pad. I've only been using this mic for a number of months now, but I'm already so impressed with its versatility and the different applications that this mic offers. Now, those are just some of my favorite mics, but with your mic, you're gonna wanna get a couple of accessories. You know you need a mic stand, you know you need an XLR cable, but you're also gonna wanna pick up a pop filter. A pop filter is just gonna help protect that highly sensitive condenser microphone from popping sounds created by P's and S's. Just trust me, you don't not wanna have one of these. The other thing that I highly recommend is a sound shield or an acoustic shield. What this does, it sits behind the microphone and it not only kills the sound that is going towards the mic, but it eliminates sound from bouncing off other surfaces in your room and traveling into the microphone. Sound treating a room with acoustic treatment and bass traps can get really expensive. This is a great way to eliminate that reflective room noise and deliver an even higher quality vocal. The next thing you wanna consider investing in is a good MIDI keyboard. Now I've done a whole video on MIDI keyboards where I go over some of my favorites and my recommendations, so I'll be sure to link that up for you. But essentially, a MIDI keyboard allows you to control and trigger software instruments within your digital audio workstation. It's a great way to incorporate a larger variety of instrumentation into your songs. And in my opinion, software instruments have really come a long way, but a good MIDI keyboard is essential for any home studio. Last but not least, you're gonna need a way to listen back to all of this music that you're making. So you're gonna need some monitors and some headphones. Monitors and headphones are another thing that really divides opinion. So I'm just gonna tell you what I use and I'll include some low budget options in the description below. But these are KRK Rocket 8s. I really like them. There's a lot of great options out there. For headphones, I've used a ton and bought a ton and wasted money on a ton. And finally found two that I really love. First of all, my absolute favorites, the ATH M50Xs from Audio-Technica. I can't really explain why, but for my ear, music just sounds the best when it's being played through these. And I can trust that if I'm mixing a track and I can get it to sound good on those headphones, then it's probably gonna sound good everywhere. Now the other option that I really, really like are these K240s from AKG. Now these have been out for a little while, so the prices come way down, and the value for these things is incredible. You can get these for like 55 bucks on Amazon right now, and let me tell you, that is a steal. Now these are semi-open headphones, so when you put them on, you can still hear a little bit of the room noise. It doesn't eliminate the sound completely the way that noise-canceling headphones do. So why would you want something like these? In a situation where you're recording vocals or a live instrument, and you want a little bit of the natural sound mixed in with the playback, you could use something like semi-open headphones. Of course, with noise-canceling headphones, you could just pop one ear off like that, but this is nice. It's nice to have a blend of the actual natural sound mixed in with the playback. There are also a lot of people who prefer to use semi-open headphones as mixing headphones too. Either way, these are a great all-purpose headphone and I highly recommend them. So this brings us to the end of the basics. I'm exhausted, I don't know about you. If you made it this far, congratulations. That's gonna be it guys, I hope this was helpful. Be sure to like and comment and subscribe. Thank you for supporting this channel. I'll have all the resources below, all the product links below, and I'll see you guys soon, all right? Peace. the air conditioner while I'm shooting video. Hmm, I can't believe I shaved for this. Do -do -do.